Hello, welcome to 4 Minutes Closer to God. My name is Doug. Uh, today I wanted to talk about the greatest attribute of God. So what would that be? Uh, we have lists of the attributes of God from his sovereignty and his omniscience, uh, knows everything, his omnipresence, he's everywhere, his omnipotence, he's all-powerful, um, he's good, and many other in this list uh, taken from the Bible and uh, people's experience. But my nominees are God's holiness and his love. So uh, some people will argue that his holiness is the basis upon which everything else operates. And today I'm going to just say it's love, and we'll go from there. So why is it important and necessary that God be love. Well, God's love existed before there was anything in creation. And so we have God loving one another of the Trinity. God the Father had love for the Son. God the Son had love for the Father. And then some would say the full expression of the love between those two is the Holy Spirit. And so we have God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit equal and loving each other before creation even occurred. And so God's essence is love. And in that essence, I suppose we would find holiness as well because God is perfect in that way. So why is God's love important? Because it is the thing that is most at risk in creating humans. And so God's sovereignty, as depicted by the Reformed Church or Calvinists, would say that God is sovereign and to one degree or another determines everything that uh, occurs. And so he would even choose those he's going to save and those he is not going to save. Well, I take exception to that because for me, the sovereignty of God is not at issue. God is sovereign. He can do whatever he chooses to do. And God's love is at issue only in the the fragile nature of the Son being sent to earth as a human and living uh, a perfect life and then going to die on the cross. And so God sent his Son, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world, the word in Greek there is cosmos, that he gave his one and only Son, his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him would not perish but have everlasting life. So John, 1 John 4, 8 and 16 explicitly state that God is love. And so we have in God the diminishment or the uh, taking back of some of his own power in order to reveal his love to humans. And so uh, one uh, person, uh, Greg Boyd, has said, the essence of true love is revealed in God's love for humanity. The eternal, other-oriented love of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is revealed outside of God in his love for humanity. God's own inherent worth is expressed in the worth he ascribes to humanity, and it is truly breathtaking. We have also... Um, an explanation of love in that uh, it gives us understanding that God created uh, the universe and cannot live in isolation. Well, God can live in isolation because there are three of them, but their love overflowed into creating humanity. And so then the sun came down to redeem humanity that was lost. So love was uh, stretching itself outward towards us in condescension in order to save us who have gone away from God, turned our back on him. Love also explains free will, and this is an important point. Unless love is a free response, it is not love. Love requires that there be a benefactor and a beneficiary, and God then deliberately acted in self-limitation to an, an endow humanity with free will. And so his love 
poured out upon us and uh, he retracted some of his own power and uh, freedom in that respect to create humans who could freely love him back. And then with that, we get redemption because Jesus has come to save us. And so God is the very definition of love. He is the source of love. And those thoughts come from Cheryl Thomas. Um, and my point is that God is love, but necessarily because Trinity loves himself, themselves, each the other perfectly and equally and in creating us has offered his love to us and if we love him back we will obey and that's the key to the christian life